Well, thank you all for coming out. I'm an attorney out of Austin, Texas. My name is Kevin Green. Uh, I have the privilege to handle a lot of civil rights cases, uh, including, um, unfortunately, a lot of police brutality cases. And they seem to be coming from, uh, most recently, from Zapata, Texas, uh, down the road from Laredo here. We're at the federal courthouse. I also have the honor and privilege of representing Mr. Uh, Rigoberto Berrientos, who uh, lost his leg. He was a victim of uh, four sheriff's deputies that assaulted him um, last year. And then his case lay buried beneath a false police report where the uh, deputy who filled out that report lied and said that uh, Mr. Barrientos started a fight with that deputy. We know because I fought along with my partner, Thomas uh, Lyons Jr., uh, very hard to finally get the Zapata uh, County officials to give us uh, a copy of all of the police body cam footage. Uh, the footage is absolutely horrific. It shows an unprovoked arrest that with no probable cause, and then much, much worse, it shows that the four deputies decided to body slam uh, Mr. Barrientos face first towards con a concrete uh, floor, and what braced his fall and probably kept him from uh, severe facial and spine injuries was his knee. His left leg, because the sheriff's deputy used a very dangerous uh, takedown maneuver, his left leg bent backwards in the opposite direction that your knee's supposed to bend so uh, forcefully that his leg, you could hear it on the video, it makes a horrible crunching popping sound. And it just splits the leg all the way off except for just a little tissue in the front. The deputies had to apply two tourniquets right away in order to save his life because quite literally Mr. Barrientos was bleeding to death on his own carport at his home for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And he was rushed to the Laredo Medical Center and then immediately sent on to San Antonio for life-saving care. Sadly, they could not reattach his leg. Uh, so Mr. Barrientos, who um, has spent a lifetime working in construction and just is a blue collar laborer um, and a, a citizen of Zapata, um, can no longer work. He can no longer take care of himself. He's crippled for life, as you can see. He's disfigured, he's traumatized. Uh, uh, they saddled him with over half a million dollars in hospital bills. He spent a month in San Antonio away from his family, away from his friends, away from the life that, that he knew in Zapata, uh, trying to recover from this horrific, horrific assault by the uh, Zapata County Sheriff's Office, the Sheriff's deputies in the office. And we have filed suit uh, this week in federal court to get justice for Mr. Barrientos. Um, the reason we're holding a press conference, though, is because this is a much wider issue. It's not just between Mr. Barrientos and the police. If it was, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. I would just be an attorney like every other attorney inside doing my job. Instead, I'm out here because this is a community problem. Anytime you have law enforcement that is so uh, poorly trained and poorly supervised that four of them would do this to Mr. Barry and Toast and then try to cover it up, right? Um, that's a big problem. The fact that these four officers were never disciplined uh, one of them, the, the chief instigator of this, uh, Deputy Martinez, has been promoted, I think, twice, but at least once into a new federally funded position. So they're absolutely, they've lifted uh, no finger to try to fix the problem. They've done absolutely nothing to help Mr. Barrientos. And no one in Zapata, none of the citizens of Zapata, deserve to be treated the way that Mr. Barrientos was treated. Uh, everybody deserves a sheriff's department that works a lot better than what they've got. And just think for a second, this crossed my mind the other day, if you were a woman living in Zapata that felt like, hey, I might want to call the police because my fight with my boyfriend or husband is escalating. Now she has to do the different type of math that no woman should have to do. They have to think if I call the cops, 
what are they going to do to this man? It might just be a little argument, right? And then for all the men, if a woman calls the police on you and you've done nothing, you don't even, you're not insulting. You're standing there very meek, very mild. And like I said, I have the videotape to prove every single thing I'm saying. And this happens to you. That's not the way Americans should live their life. I know that these communities on the border are good people. And I know there are, there are a lot of good officers and no one deserves to have uh, a sheriff that's unwilling to take a stand and fix a problem, just like Sheriff uh, Raimundo del Bosque apparently has been. So it's a sad story. Um, we are here to get justice for Mr. Barrientos. I know this process is gonna take a while and I really appreciate everyone coming out to listen to what happened, to spread the word that there is a problem, a big problem in the sheriff's office in Zapata County that needs to get fixed. And the politicians have an opportunity. I said I had the video. I don't wanna release the video. I want them to release the video. I think that's their job. Uh, they are the public officials. They're the elected officials. You know, this is gonna be something that comes up, I'm sure, during the campaign season that's coming up in 2024 and even starting now. And if they don't get a handle on what's wrong in Zapata, then the citizens need to know and they need to, they need to know in time before they vote. So I am today uh, pleading with the uh, county officials, the county commissioners, the sheriff himself, anyone that will listen in Zapata County to release that video and to make some statements, tell people what they intend to do to fix this, to make sure that no one else gets hurt like Mr. Barrientos, and to make sure that the public knows that no one's gonna tolerate uh, a hyper-violent police force that's just taking it out on, on people because they can. Thank you very much. And I'll open the floor to a few questions and uh, please go ahead. Do you have any information on, on what investigation, if any, was conducted after the incident? I think almost nothing was done. Um, right now, um, there needs to be a full, open, transparent, uh, investigation to where not just me and, and Mr. Barrientos, but the entire community can feel assured that someone's really looking into this. And I don't know if that's the federal officials that need to get involved out there, you know, uh, for any type of, of uh, civil rights investigation or anything like that, but that would be an important step. Um, I would hope that um, we might even hear from the U.S. Attorney or, you know, the Texas Rangers and people that handle um, public accountability when a police department or a sheriff's department uh, is operating outside of the law. Have you looked into their personnel files, uh, deputies that, that were involved in, in this incident? I have Do not been provided um, the personal personnel files. I've asked for them. Um, I will be able to get my hands on them during the course of discovery. Uh, uh, and for viewers and listeners who don't know, the discovery is just a process where both sides to a lawsuit exchange information, uh, you know, pursuant to like the judge being the referee on how that goes. Uh, we are we are definitely entitled to it. And once the suit, you know, goes its course, we're going to go through a very fulsome uh, discovery process and we're going to leave no uh, stone unturned on our end to figure out how these people got hired. I mean, what are their backgrounds? Do they have a history of this? What uh, disciplinary actions, if any, were taken. And maybe most importantly, were they ever given any training? Like, especially after this happened, you know, has there been, uh, and there needs to be a, a whole new, like, uh, continuing education program for the deputies in Zapata County um, on, on de-escalation, uh, proper use of force, and how to do a takedown without breaking someone's leg completely off their body. I think that's not a lot to ask. Is, is there a criminal investigation ongoing uh, in regards to their actions? I am not privy to that. I don't know. I hope so. Um, it's not an area of law that I practice in. Um, you know, if there was, it'd probably be the Texas Rangers or the FBI that was handling it. And I'm sure that they'd be happy to answer any question like that. Uh, one last question. Uh, is Mr. Barriento still facing criminal charges for this incident? That's a uh, super interesting question. He's faced absolutely none none and the reason why is they shouldn't have arrested him in the first place and his arrest report on the top says oh he was arrested for resisting arrest we all know that that's a ridiculous charge you have to be arrested for something first you just can't resist arrest out of the blue right so um 
our contention in the lawsuit is pretty simple that um, without probable cause, any use of force against Mr. Barrientos, even handcuffing Mr. Barrientos or grabbing Mr. Barrientos was an unreasonable, excessive use of force. But quite clearly, even if they did have a basis to, a, to arrest him, this wasn't like an active shooter situation where someone had to be taken out where it was life or death. They should not have snapped this poor man's leg completely off his body. Well, I'm sorry, one last question. What are the causes, uh, namely in this federal civil lawsuit? What are the uh, causes? The, the cost? Cost of actions. Oh, the causes of action. So we have um, a First Amendment claim. Our contention for that is that um, Mr. Barrientos was arrested for simply saying his opinion about, hey, you know, this is my house too, right? That's what the video shows. And the, the deputy kind of got mad at that for some weird reason and arrested him. So it's it's been uh, black letter constitutional law in the United States for decades and decades that you are not, a police officer is not allowed to arrest somebody for expressing a viewpoint, even if the police officer disagrees with it. Um, but the more obvious ones for, for most people is going to be, this was a uh, use of excessive force in violation of the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments of the U.S. Constitution. Uh, that's your, the Fourth Amendment, something everyone's heard of. That's a, your protections against unreasonable searches and seizures. Obviously, this is a seizure that went wildly, wildly wrong. Are there any other questions? I got no more questions. Please. Okay. Can you clarify, do you have the video already or? We've got the video and we're waiting to see if the county will release it themselves. And if they won't, maybe one day we will. We'll just have to see how that goes. I, but I want, I want them to uh, take this opportunity to do the right thing. Um, you know, these are, these are elected officials. Um, they don't need to hide behind lawyers. They don't need to hide behind their desk. You know, if they have a problem, they need to get out in front of it. They need to go public and tell people, hey, this is what happened. It was wrong and it's never going to happen again. And here's what we're going to do about it. And so far, it's just been silence. So I invite the, the media to follow up with them as well. You know, what do they plan on doing about this? And if any of these officials are uh, have not seen the video, if the sheriff's office is hiding the video from the county commissioners or whatever's going on in Zapata, call me, email me, any public official in Zapata, I will let you watch the video yourself. That way you can take a stand against what happened. Were there any steps taken prior to the lawsuit on trying to rectify the, or find a solution or anything to that, to that uh, situation? The, the uh, county has done nothing no outreach whatsoever to Mr. Barrientos. Uh, they know that they've crippled this man. Uh, they know that they've deprived him of a way to uh, earn a living. He's not been helped by the county whatsoever. Um, no one contacted anybody. And like I said, they kind of were hiding behind a false arrest report. And um, when I asked them, and I had Mr. Barrientos ask them for all of the information about his case, the videos and the arrest record, uh, they told us to go fly a kite. They weren't giving it to us. I had to sue them in Zapata County uh, just to release the public records on Mr. Barrientos. That's how much they wanted to uh, sweep this under the rug. So that was a big fight and that was expensive for us, and we, but we won. And so they have now given me that information. And, and with that, I was able to file suit in federal court and we're gonna go get justice for this man. Any, any words, Mr. Barrientos? No. No, I just want to say that que por no más que se haga justicia y que por no creo que le pase a alguien más que le pasó. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one of the major reasons we're we're fighting this lawsuit as well. Is uh, Mr. Barrientos feels very strongly that no one else should go through what he went through. Nobody. So we're going to stop it. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. That, that, I guess, concludes the press conference. Um, I really appreciate everyone coming out today. Thanks. Thank you. And you all have my email if you have any uh, need follow on. Okay. Thank you all so much.